When did we forget how to love? Did it happen suddenly? Or was it a gradual decline? When did we forget the very foundation of the gospel? For God so loved. Love is what moved God to action. Love is what held Jesus to the cross. Love is what rolled away the stone. But we, we've forgotten that part. Without love, we are simply a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal, a bunch of noise. Without love, we are nothing. Is that what people see in us? Meaningless, empty noise? Love is supposed to be patient and kind, gentle, not angry or arrogant. Yet in our effort to stand on truth, we have forgotten the very thing these truths are based on. Love. Never once did Jesus fail in this. Not in his heartbreak or his anger. Not in his joy or his betrayal. His default has always been love. Maybe it's time the church was more like Jesus. Can you guys just stand with me? We're just going to pray together before we go into the message. Would you bow your heads? Lord, we want to love. You first loved us and showed us what love is. And Lord, I just pray today as we hear a message from your word, that you would teach us how to love. Lord, I pray that you'd open our hearts, that we'd set aside those things we've carried in this morning, even those hurts and those betrayals, that we set them aside and we hear from you this morning, from your word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will never pass away. And we want to hear from your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, you can be seated. Good morning. Can you all give me a wave and just let me know you're awake? Hi. Well, we're going to just dive right in. We are in a sermon series right now. Um, what's the sermon series called? Grow. Say that with me. Grow. Grow. We're in a sermon series called Grow, um, how to build big faith in our lives. And this week as I was preparing, I felt like um, some of us, and myself very much included here, um, Right when we're about this point in the series, we are seriously experiencing some growing pains, okay? Growing pains. Now, I don't know if growing pains are a legit medical condition. There's probably some health professionals in here, but I think they are, okay? So when I was in elementary, um, I remember, you know, I definitely had growing pains. I would wake up in the night and my legs would ache and they would hurt and... Of course, I was not an overly dramatic child at all, um, but I had growing pains, and my parents, I'd get up and go, wait, but wake my parents up, and they would say what probably every other parent would say is like, it's just growing pains, go back to bed, you know. But um, I want to say today that spiritual growing pains are a thing, okay? They are an actual thing. Has anyone had what you'd call spiritual growing pains? Anyone, like, you know that you're growing, but sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's a little painful or it aches, right? And so I just felt like maybe that's where some of us are as we've been in this series. I want to just kind of review what we've talked about so far in this series over the last few weeks where when we've talked about growing and our faith growing. You know, the first week of this series, um, we said that our thesis, for the series is this, that a relationship with God transforms our lives, right? So that we should be different. We're different than how we used to be, 
We're different from those around us. And how many of you were here and you remember we had two whiteboards up here, right? Do you remember that week? And on this side, we wrote all the things, um, the earthly things that we're going to put to death. And on this side, we wrote all the spiritual things that we're going to put on. You know, some of these earthly things that we were going to put to death, like sexual immorality and lust and greed and rage and filthy language and all those things. Well, I don't know about you, but when I put something like that to death, it's kind of painful, right? And so there we have some growing pains. So that was week one. And then the next week, um, Pastor Matt, oh, talked about a word we all love. He talked about the word discipline. Oh, uh, that's a terrible word, right? Discipline. He talked about um, how we have to show up in some spiritual disciplines if we want to grow. You know, some spiritual disciplines like prayer and reading scripture. You know, discipline can be painful. There's some growing pains in that, right? And then last week, um, Pastor Rod um, talked about that we grow when we give God control of our time. And we are so reluctant to give up any of our precious time, aren't we? Aren't we? Shake your heads. I know you are because I am. Um, And we talked about how that might hurt sometimes and it might cause some growing pains in us. And so I thought, you know, it's my week to preach. I thought we're just going to keep right along this, with this. We are just going to talk about something today that, um, that might also cause a few more growing pains, okay? So how many of you are so glad you're here today? You are just so glad that you are here um, to talk about this. What I want to talk about today, um, part of this, you know, it might hurt a little or be a little uncomfortable. Part of it's not going to be so bad. But I want to talk today, I want to get specific, and I want to talk about relationships, okay? Can you say relationships? Can I say that again? Relationships, okay? And what I want to say this morning, we're talking about growing, is that we grow by letting God speak into our relationships, okay? We grow by letting God speak into our relationships. Okay, now that doesn't sound so bad, right? That doesn't sound so bad. Okay, we'll get to the bad part in a little bit. But first of all, we'll start out with some some good stuff. Let's start out with like a foundation. If we're going to talk about relationships, if we're going to talk about, okay, God speaking into our relationships, well, first, we got to have some relationships, right? Is that, that's pretty obvious, right? Shake your head with me. Yes, we got to have some relationships. I know that seems really obvious, but some of us, especially after the last few years that we've gone through, some of us, we tend to isolate, don't we? We tend to avoid relationships, right? And we can't let God speak into our relationships if we don't have any relationships. You know, I know we're all, we all have different um, personalities. We're from extrovert to introvert and everywhere in between. But all of us were created to be connected to others in some way, shape, or form. And so for us to grow by letting God speak into our relationships, we got to have some relationships, okay? So that's a whole other sermon, but that's like a foundational block right there. Okay, the second foundation that I want to just kind of start with is that we would just define what are some of our, like, common relationships, okay? So we have family relationships, right? So that would be, like, parents, children, you know, extended family, siblings, right? Then we have romantic relationships. Woo, yeah. Some of you in here, we have marriage. We have maybe you're dating. Maybe you're engaged. Or I put up there my favorite Facebook status is it's complicated. Maybe that's your relationship, but it's still a relationship. It's complicated. You know, then we have social relationships. We have friends and we have co-workers, neighbors and classmates, right? You guys tracking with me? So probably we would all say, you know, yeah, any of these relationships up here, I would love for them to get better. Even if they're great, we'd, we'd love our relationships to get even better, right? And so I want to start, um, I just want to spend like three minutes maybe um, on talking about how do we make these relationships get better before we move on to something that might cause us a little bit of growing pains, okay? So first of all, um, this is actually fairly straightforward. It doesn't mean that it's always easy to walk out 
but most of us would probably agree with some relationship advice that Jesus actually gave, okay? Even if you're here today and you're not a follower of Jesus, um, if you've never even heard of Jesus, when you hear this relationship advice, you'd probably shake your head and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, okay? So we're going to look at that first. In Matthew chapters 5 through 7, um, Jesus gave a really long sermon, okay? Preachers have been giving really long sermons since the time of Jesus, okay? So there we go, long-winded. But Jesus gives this sermon called the Sermon on the Mount, and this is what he says in one part of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, 12. He says this, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. Okay, has anyone heard that before? Anyone? Okay, we've probably all heard that. What do we call that? The, go- uh, the golden rule, right? The golden rule. But some of you, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Now, some of you, though, your mind is blown right now because you thought your grandma made that up, and you didn't know that Jesus is the one that actually said that, right? Jesus is the one that actually said this, you know, some of you, at least when you're growing up, you think, oh, that's just something my mom made up or my grandma, you know, they're trying to get me to share something with my younger sibling or, you know, let the neighbor kid go first at whatever. Or, you know, maybe you're a little, when you're a teenager, maybe it's something like your driver's ed teacher made up, right? When Don't cut people off in traffic. Do unto others what you would have them do unto you, right? But no, Jesus is the one that actually said this, okay? This is the golden rule. And we, we know this. We know this. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, not because it's not important, not because it doesn't work, and not because we don't need reminded of it. It's just that we know this, right? So consider this your reminder. This is a freebie. This one's free, okay? This is your reminder. You want your relationships to improve? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You know, you want your relationship with your spouse to improve. Treat your spouse the way you would want to be treated. You want your boss and your coworkers to treat you with dignity and respect. Well, treat your boss and your coworkers with dignity and respect, right? You want friends that will pray for you and show up during hard times. Well, be a friend that prays and shows up during hard times, right? You know, this isn't a way that we, um, like a formula for how to like manipulate people and get them to treat us a certain way. What I want us to remember is we're in this series about how to grow our faith. This isn't that we change how other people act. It turns out that we grow when we allow God to speak into our relationships and when we treat others the way we'd want to be treated, okay? So that was free. That was completely free. You with me? Give me thumbs up. Okay, so here we go. There's one more category of relationships that I have not mentioned yet. And being truthful, we don't even like to call these relationships. I don't like to call these relationships. We usually like to use the word relationship in like a positive context. But the very same Sermon on the Mount, this long sermon from Jesus, the very same sermon, Jesus says something else. And this is the part that will most certainly cause you, cause me some growing pains, right? I'd rather skip over this part. But this is what Jesus says. Jesus has the audacity to say this. In Matthew 5, verse 43, he says this. You have heard people say, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for anyone who mistreats you. What in the world? That doesn't sit right. That doesn't sit right. What? We grow by letting God speak into our relationships, and that includes even with our enemies, okay, our enemies. Now, the word enemy, that's like a really strong word, right? So you're probably sitting there thinking, well, I don't really have any enemies. Like, who are my enemies, right? I want I want you to listen. This is where God, he got me this week on this. I want you to hear this. What if we expanded our thinking of this word enemy to to include maybe just some other categories? What if it said 
instead of love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you? What if it said, love that difficult person at work and pray for the person that took all the credit from your group project, right? What if it said, love that business partner that cheated you out of some money or pray for that kid who's been mean to your son at school? Ooh, I don't want to pray for that kid, right? What if it said, love that person who believes differently than you and pray for that neighbor, that one that has all those political signs in their yard that are from the wrong political party, right? What if it said to pray for them? What if it said, love that professor who was unfair to you? Or pray for your ex-husband who was unfaithful to you? What if it said, love that person who lied about you? Or pray for that parent that walked out on your family? What if it said, love that person at your old church that judged you? Or pray for that person that continues to gossip about you? Right? That's painful. Right? That's painful. When we hear love your enemies, sometimes we just think, well, I don't really have any enemies, right? But what about the difficult people in your life, the ones you don't really want to love, the ones you don't really want to pray for, right? If you're like me, there's something that like is rising up in you right now saying, no, this cannot be right. This is not how it's supposed to be. But I want to say we grow by letting God speak into our relationships, even the hard ones even the ones that we don't really want him to speak into, right? You know, just a side note here. When it says to love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you, that doesn't mean like you stay in some kind of like unsafe situation, right? You can love and pray at a distance, can't you, right? It, this is not justifying any kind of, you know, abuse or abusive situation at all. It doesn't mean we don't put up boundaries. That's not what I'm talking about. But what I am talking about is that we grow by letting God speak into our relationships. It might not have anything to do with the other person, but we grow. You know, the same Jesus that said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Something that's, you know, almost universally we would say, yeah, that's good advice. The same Jesus in the same sermon said, love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you. So, is it hot in here? Or is it just me? Are y'all with me? Like this is no fun, right? Well, just wait. Let's see. Let's go. Let's see what Jesus goes on to say. So, verse forty-three, we read. You've heard people say, "Love your enemies, love your neighbor, and hate your enemy." I tell you, love your enemies and pray for anyone who mistreats you. Look at this, verse forty-five. Then you, who say you, then you will be acting like your Father in heaven. This is about you, your faith growing, not the other person, not the other person that mistreated you, not the person who, not the bully that was mean to your son, not the, that person that walked out on the family. You, when you love your enemy and you pray for those who mistreat you, then you are acting like your Father in heaven. This is not, has nothing to do with them. It has everything to do with you and your faith growing. And Jesus goes on, and then he says, um, you'll be acting like your Father in heaven, and then he, which is our Father in heaven, he makes the sun rise on both good and bad people. And he sends rain for the ones who do right and the ones who do wrong. Okay, look at this. This is saying this is how our Father in heaven acts. He makes the sun rise on good and bad. He sends rain on the, those who do right and those who do wrong. This is something we call common grace. Can you say common grace? Common grace. Common grace is that there are many blessings and acts of God's favor that he just freely gives to all people, right? All people, whether they acknowledge him or not. See, here the examples are, think of this. The sun comes up every day for everyone, right? It comes up for your sweet little old grandma, and it comes up for the school bully, right? 
The sun comes up for everyone. That's common grace. That, that is the favor of the Lord on everyone, right? And then he, he gives another example about rain. Think about this in um, the culture times of the Bible. It would, it's this agrarian society, right? They needed rain to survive for their crops to grow. And it says that God sends rain on both the farmer who's generous to the poor and shares what he has, and he also sends rain to the farmer who hoards everything and keeps it to himself, right? That's how our Father acts. That is common grace. And that he's saying when we love our enemies and pray for those who mistreat us, that we're acting like our Father. Now that rubs me the wrong way. Uh, Anyone else, does that rub you the wrong way? I don't know if I want to do that. But Jesus, he's not done yet. He, He goes on. Verse 46. If you love only those people who love you, will God reward you for this? Even tax collectors love their friends, right? Tax collectors, that's exactly what it sounds like, the IRS of their day, right? I apologize if you work for the IRS, but tax collectors, they're even nice to their own friends, right? In verse 47, if you greet only your friends, what's so great about this? Don't even unbelievers do that? Right, don't, even those who don't profess any faith in God, they're nice to their own friends, right? And, and remember back to week one, a relationship with God is supposed to transform our lives. So we're supposed to be different than those who don't have a relationship with God, right? And then Jesus ends this section, verse 48, he says this, but you must always act like your father in heaven right? You must always act like your Father in heaven, verse 48. So this is, when, when we say, you know, we grow by inviting God to speak into our relationships, these are the growing pains that I'm talking about. Like, the, this is the part that makes me, like, squirm a little bit. I'm not sure about this. You know, yes, of course we grow when we let God speak into our relationships with our families and our friends and our marriages and our neighbors and our coworkers, but our enemies, right? Our enemies, really? Did he have to go there? Those difficult people in our lives, the people who wronged us, those people too? You know, I want to just share a story with you guys um, how God had to do something on my heart in this area. Um, This, you know, without going into a ton of detail, there was a season um, for Rod and I, when we were in a transition before we started um, Sea Life, and there was this couple that we definitely they considered them friends. They were friends of ours. I had known them since college. Rod had become friends with them when he moved up here. Um, we'd served on mission trips together. We'd hung out together many times. We'd played many games. Um, I had to have surgery one time, and they, our girls, were little at the time, and they kept our girls while I was having surgery. So. I mean, we were, like, good friends, right? And then um, through a series of circumstances over the period of about two months or so, it was like a light switch, like, flipped. And they um, started believing some rumors and some lies about us, um, never came to ask us if they were true. Um, they, They started believing them, and then not only that, then they started spreading lies and rumors about us, and all of a sudden, one day, it was just like we were dead to them, right? But yet, we still all lived in this very small city. So it was really hard. It was hurtful. It was confusing. Um, Some of you, like when you get hurt, um, you go to the place of being sad. Is anyone like that? You get sad. That's your default response. Well, for me, when I get hurt, my response is anger. I get mad, okay? You probably couldn't have guessed that about me, but I get mad. Um, So all these things were going on, and my heart was not in a very good place. I was mad. I wanted to get even. I wanted to start spreading lies about them, how they were spreading lies about us, and, you know, maybe slash a few tires or something, right? I know, like, that's the dark side of me, but please don't leave the church, because this was a few years ago, and I've grown, okay? I have come a long way. Not that I would never actually do that, but you know, you've thought of it. Okay, 
But I certainly, I'll tell you what I did not want to do. I certainly did not want to pray for them. Okay? Uh, that was the very last thing that I wanted to do. And then during that time, um, I sensed God start speaking to me and telling me that he wanted us to send them a card in the mail and send them some money, okay? The, the, the husband had just quit his job to do full-time ministry. Things were tight for them, and so I felt like God said he wanted us to send them some money. And what do I do immediately? I argue with God. I say there is no way on God's green earth, I mean, excuse me, there's no way on your green earth that I'm going to send them a dime, right? No, there is no way that I'm sending them any money, right? So I made the mistake of telling Rod about this, of saying, like, yeah, I'm, like, totally out in left field because I think I heard God say this, but there's no way that he actually said this, and even if he did, there's no way I'm going to do it, right? And Rod just looked at me. He just looked at me with that look. And it did not melt my heart. It made me mad. It made me more mad, okay? I must have anger problems here. He looks at me, and he's just like, okay, he didn't say anything. And I just got mad. Finally, God and Rod, they rhyme, they go together, two little pieces of the pod there. They teamed up on me, it felt like, and finally, um, finally I gave in, and they won. And I don't, I'm not telling you this in any way to say, look at me, look at us, because I'm actually really embarrassed of how long it took me to give in. You know, I say, God, Jesus is the Lord and Savior and Master of my life, right? But it took me a really long time to obey. But finally, Rod and I ended up sending them a card, and we sent a check in the mail for $1,000. And that gave me a heart attack, okay? I don't know about you, maybe that's not very much money to you. For me, that was a small fortune, and I was not feeling it, right? But we did it. You know, we did it. And you know what? We never heard a word from them, not one word, not thank you, not nothing. I know they got the money because the check was cashed and $1,000 came out of our account, right? Uh, never heard anything. But you know what? That wasn't the point. The point was my heart. My heart softened. God was working on me. My brittle heart that was so hurt and so wounded and so betrayed that I had just closed off to protect myself from ever getting hurt again, especially by those people, right? My heart softened, and it melted, and all of a sudden, I was free. And I was $1,000 poor. But I was free. I was free. And when Jesus says love your enemies, in this case, love was an act of will. It wasn't a feeling. Okay? Please hear that. Love your enemies. It's not a feeling. Okay? Sometimes it is just an action of obedience. I was free. You can be free too. We grow when we let God speak into our relationships especially the hard ones, especially the difficult ones, right? And, you know, we, we've looked at pieces of this passage. I want us to read this passage together in its entirety. In Matthew 5, 43 to 48, this, I, I, this is going to give you growing pains, and I pray that this gets under your skin this week, okay? I want these verses to be in your heart and your mind this week for God to... Um, just speak to you. What does this mean to you? Meditate on these verses this week. I want us to read these together um, out loud, just slowly, just, um, just to let this sink in, okay? So can you guys read this with me? It says, you have heard people say, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I tell you to love your enemies and pray for anyone who mistreats you. Then you will be acting like your Father in heaven. He makes the sun rise on both good and bad people. And he sends rain for the ones who do right and for the ones who do wrong. If you love only those people who love you, 
Will God reward you for this? Even tax collectors love their friends. If you greet only your friends, what's so great about this? Don't even unbelievers do that? But you must always act like your Father in heaven. Amen. And growing pains might be a part of that. And sometimes it might cost you. But our, our heart for this whole series, we don't want to stay where we're at. Right? We want to grow. We want our faith to grow. We want to build big faith in our lives. We want to be different than how we used to be. And we want to be different than the people around us that don't know Jesus. You know, in 1 Peter 3, 9, it says this. It's another one that just kind of rubs me the wrong way. It says this, don't repay evil for evil, right? Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. This is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessing. What would it look like in your life, in those difficult relationships in your life, what would it look like for you to return good for evil? Not evil for evil, but good for evil. And, and not just, okay, not just, you know, refuse to do something bad, refuse to slash their tires, not just that, right? But what would it look like to actively love? You know, not just ignore them, not just tolerate those people, not just put up with them, but to love them, to love your enemy, to pray for those who mistreat you. Or like it says here, to pay them back. I like to pay people back, right, when they hurt me, but pay them back with a blessing. Yeah, it's some growing pains right there, but you know what? We grow. It, it might not change them at all. Sometimes it does, and I've seen that, and that is beautiful. It might change them into their heart, but it might not change them at all. But you know who it's going to change? It's going to change us. We grow when we let God speak into our relationship. You know, what is a difficult relationship that maybe you can purposefully invite God into this week? What, who is he bringing to your mind right now? What situation is he bringing to your mind where he just wants to say, invite me into this. Invite me to speak to you about this. Right? Don't, don't be like this with your spiritual ears and just cover them up. Invite me into this relationship. We're going to close this morning um, with something I want to call um, a posture prayer. And, um, you know, loving our enemies, it's not just something we do externally. You know, yes, there are acts of our will that we do. And in, in my case, in that story I shared, that was an act of, a wi- of my will. But that's not ultimately where I want to be. I really want my heart to be transformed, right? We don't just want it to be externally. We want our heart to be transformed. And sometimes our external bodies help model to our own hearts the transformation that we want to take place. So we're going to do um, what's called a posture prayer. And don't worry, it's not too weird, okay? Don't worry. Um, but would you go ahead and stand with me? And I, um, I'm i going to read just a prayer over you as we just take a different posture with our bodies. And so the first posture that I want us to take, can you guys like clench your fists like this? Can you just like put them up like, I don't know anything about kickboxing, but like if you were like this, like you're ready to fight, would you close your eyes? Lord, I confess my natural human tendency is to fight when someone wrongs me or someone I love. Whether in word, thought, or actions, my natural posture are these clenched fists, getting even and righting the wrong. Now can you just open open those hands up right out in front of you? But I acknowledge that you said there is a better way, a way to respond how you would, a way to respond where I will be acting like my Father in heaven. I choose surrender, love, and prayer. Now would you just put your hands up, just like this. 
and a sign of surrender. I surrender my right to be right and to make things right. I surrender. Can you put your hands over your heart? Love. I choose to love. I choose to love, to bless, to speak life, especially to my enemies, to those who have hurt me, to those who have wronged me. I choose love. And then would you just hold your hands together like this. And God, with your help, I commit to pray for those who have mistreated me. In my flesh, that's hard, but my spirit is willing. And as my hands are are folded in front of me right now, just as a reminder to my heart, I commit to pray for those who have mistreated me. I choose surrender. I choose love. I choose to live. You said love your enemies and pray for those who mistreat you. And I have surrendered my life to you, so I follow your lead. I thank you, Lord, right now that there will be relationships that will be transformed because we choose to love, because we choose to pray. Lord, there will be um, people that are not even in this room, that don't even know you, that will come to know you because we choose to love when the world says we have no reason why we should love them. Lord, I I pray for the transformation of our own hearts. God, that we would be transformed as we choose to do life your way, not the way that makes sense to our minds, our hearts, or our world, but we choose your way. We love our enemies. We pray for those who mistreat us because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing together as we get ready to close.
set some pretty high standards and examples for how he would desire that we live. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm just blown away. You know who wrote and cashed a really, really big check? Jesus Christ. And we daily, weekly, minutely for myself sometimes continue to do wrong and he would do it over and over and over again. So I know one thing, we're going to all get an opportunity to test out what we've heard today and test out what we've learned today. And can we just walk together with each other in grace in that? Can we be so thankful that we have a good father who loves us and wants to grow us? He does. He wants to grow us and he wants us to just love others around us. Um, so just thank you, worship team, for, for being with us today. Thank you, Renee, for that word. And we're just glad that you all were here with us this morning. Just a couple of reminders um, before we all go today. Number one, guests, if you're here with us in the theater downtown, we'd love to say hi to you. So just please stop by the guest table. Let us give you a gift and say hey to you. If you're watching with us online and you're a guest, please, please click that link and fill it out so that we know that you are watching with us. Another reminder about our giving table. Again, if you're here downtown, you can give. You can give online. You can give through the app. Um, and then just another reminder for college students, there is group today and there is food. I saw it in there. It looks delicious. So please, please head down to um, the Norwood Room Church office to have college group. So let's all just close in prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you love us so much that you don't want to leave us the same, but you want us to grow, Lord. And thank you that, that you're with us in that and that you are not alone, that we are not alone and you don't leave us alone. Lord, thank you for the relationships that we have that grow and build us up. And Lord, we just put out our hands and we just ask you to enter into those relationships that are hard for us. And as we encounter some difficulties this week, would you give us the strength? Would you give us the peace? Would you give us the discernment? Would you help move our mouths and our feet and our hands the way that, that you set the example to, the way that Jesus lived as he was on earth? Lord, we know that you're with us this week. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you.